In this video, we see a B-24 bomber deploying chaff as part of the formation's flat countermeasures. The intent of this video is to review the combat effectiveness of chaff deployment, which will disrupt German gun-laying radar. As discussed in previous videos, fighters were more of a threat to bombers up to June 1944, the month of D-Day, whereas flak was more of a threat after June 1944. To combat this shifting threat from fighters to flak, the 8th Air Forces adopted various anti-flak countermeasures to reduce bomber losses, as discussed on this page from a 1998 Maxwell Air Force Base report titled Archie, Flak, AAA, and SAM. This includes bombers routing around flak positions, flying at higher altitudes, saturating the target area, and flying with tighter formations. These flak avoidance methods will be discussed in a future video. Germany relied on radar for early warning and gun laying, especially at night or in poor weather. The British held around a two-year lead in radar technology over the Germans. The radar would track and range the bomber formations. This was a critical piece of Germany's integrated air defense system, especially when the bomber formations were obscured optically by night raids, heavy cloud cover, smoke, dust, or debris from previous raids. One of the radar countermeasures used is window or chaff. Thousands of thin aluminum foil strips would be dropped from the bomber formations. These foil strips would give erroneous German radar scope readings. Window was first used in the very destructive RAF Hamburg firebomb raid of July 1943. The second major radar countermeasure system is called carpet. Carpet is a device that actively jams radar. This is an example of a carpet system. We will cover carpet in a future video. This page outlines characteristics of chaff from a 1945 Army Air Forces document titled Graphic Survey of Radio and Radar Countermeasures Equipment. Chaff creates false radar scope images. It consists of thin aluminum foil strips whose length is sized to one half the radar's wavelength. Its sink rate equates to 260 feet per minute. It will take around one and a half hours for chaff to reach the ground from bombing altitudes. Its effectiveness depends on a slow rate of fall and slow rate of dispersal. Each packet contains 2,000 strips. This is an example of a chaff unit packet. The strips may vary in length to provide good broad radar frequency return coverage. They are dropped out of the B-24 waste windows or chutes as seen in this video. B-24s are modified to expedite the use of chaff best weapon against enemy radar detection devices. Chaff consists of thin metallic strips which are scattered from Allied bombers during operations over hostile territory. When enemy radar and ranging instruments probe for our planes, the chaff confuses and distorts the wave impulses on which radar instruments depend for accuracy. Chaff used to be dumped from the old open waste windows, but when modifications permitted firing with windows closed, group engineering of the 15th Air Force developed this chaff chute built into the plane's waste. Now the chaff is sucked out and scattered by the slipstream, and with no further need to open a waste window, a gunner can operate comfortably and more efficiently, protected from freezing prop blasts on high altitude missions. And this again is a small but important example of how GI initiative brings benefit to the men themselves. The B-17's radio room operator will drop the packets through the radio room's belly camera hatch just forward of the ball turret. The location of the hatch is shown on this interior and exterior underside image. Bomber modifications were adopted in the fall of 1943, as shown on this chart outlining heavy bomber modifications as the war progressed from an October 1945 8th Air Force's document titled tactical development. Special chutes were installed on the B-24s. These chutes were installed as field modifications. The chap dispensing lead plane can cover the whole formation. It can be used against early warning or gun laying radar. The radar returns from the actual planes are masked by the chaff. Bomber missions using chaff have experienced fewer losses than missions without chaff. A unit of chaff is defined to produce a radar return equivalent to a single heavy bomber. This table lists a chaff name and effective frequency of masking. The CHA-3 and CHA-28 chaff types were effective in negating the Würzburg class of radars. This image shows the progression and effect of chaff. A high altitude B-17 formation is here. The Würzburg radar is tracking the formation. The chaff packets are released from the radio room hatch and scatter in the slipstream. The chaff is dispersed as a cloud and reflects the radar return. Scope return without chaff. False reading saturated scope return with chaff. 
This chart illustrates chaff bundle sizes to represent a single heavy bomber and three heavy bombers from an October 1945 War Department Office of Scientific Research and Development document titled Electronic Warfare, a Report on Radar Countermeasures, Scope Return Without Chaff and With Chaff. The U.S. adopted chaff in their bombing missions in December 1943, some five months after first use during the RAF Hamburg raid. It was dropped by the first combat box. It provided coverage for the trailing groups. In addition to chaff, electronic radar countermeasures equipment was added to every bomber. Carpet and chaff were very effective when working together. The 15th Air Force's heavy bomber chaff usage is described on this page from a February 1945 Assistant Chief of the Air Staff Intelligence document titled Impact. The most effective radar jamming countermeasures is carpet plus chaff or window. The lead formation drops 324 packets per minute with the following formation and tight trail. The packets are dropped three minutes prior to the initial point and will continue past the target area. The following formation should fly close to the window fields but don't fly through them. The Germans will likely be targeting the window fields with inaccurate barrage fire. Additional information regarding chaff usage is shown on this page from a 1992 Duke University doctoral dissertation document titled USAF and Electronic Warfare 1945-1955. to Each bomber carried 500 chaff unit packets. This created a chaff corridor 20 miles long. This table outlines the frequency of chaff coverage from a 1988 Air Staff College report titled Electronic Combat over the Third Reich. German ground radar operates over the frequency shaded. U.S. chaff covers this frequency range, and electronic carpet jammers covers this frequency range. So how successful was chaff in reducing the effectiveness of German gun-laying radar? Five months after the RAF Hamburg raid, the Germans offered a reward to anyone who could eliminate or reduce the effect window had on German radar returns, as discussed in this June 1945 Headquarters United States Strategic Air Forces in Europe document titled Minutes, a Flat Conference. It is impossible to recognize, measure, or track formations when window is deployed. To claim the prize, provide a method to combat these effects. The solution must be feasible. Proposals to be submitted by January 4, 1944. Goering will award the prize monies in these increments. No tax to be collected. Five or six submissions were deemed feasible out of the 150 submitted. A summary of CHAF's effectiveness is discussed on this page from an August 1945 Office of the Commanding General U.S. Air Force document titled Air Operations Brief. Captured German documents and POW interrogations were used to evaluate the combat effectiveness of radar countermeasures. The countermeasures were mostly directed at gun-laying radar with CHAF and carpet. The radar countermeasures reduced flax effectiveness by 70% when the formations were operating in conditions with reduced visibility, like cloud cover at 10 over 10. The flak gunners resorted to barrage firing, which is both less accurate and consumes large quantities of rounds as compared to continuously pointed fire. It took between 25,000 and 40,000 barrage fire flak rounds to destroy a bomber, whereas it only took 2,500 rounds if targeting was done by continuously pointed fire. Even with sealing and visibility on limited conditions, radar was required to track and range the bombers, in addition to the optical sighting instruments. Under standard operating good visibility conditions, the Germans would rely on radar for ranging the bomber formations. Radar countermeasures also diverted Germany's resources. 50 to 90 percent of Germany's electronic research personnel were working on countering the Allied radar countermeasures. U.S. wartime aluminum production foil tripled. 75% of the foil was used to fabricate chaff. Since the radar countermeasures reduced blind bombing mission losses by 75%, this can translate into radar countermeasures being responsible in saving some 450 bombers. By the end of the war, Germany had deployed some 16,000 operational heavy flak guns. They also deployed 4,000 Würzburg-type radars. This represented an investment of around a billion dollars. 
In this December 1945 Distinguished Civilian Service Award to Merwin Bly from the Secretary of Navy James Forrestal, chaff is described as having the same effect on enemy radar fire control systems as a smoke screen would have on optical detectors and reduce the effectiveness of enemy fire control by 75 percent if you've enjoyed this chaff radar countermeasures deep dive review please consider liking commenting and or subscribing to the channel world war ii u.s bombers